people who would espouse the communicative approach, so-called, would of course say, oh, well, we want to be able to teach to a high level and all the rest of it. But it does seem to me that just by the name communicative does imply that if communication has happened, then we've achieved our goal. Exactly. And of course, communication can happen with lousy language, you know, gestures, context, also getting just, if getting the message across is all you need, yes. many times you don't even need language. Well, exactly. Yes, I had a cousin called Ian, and he said to me, oh, traveling around Europe is really easy. He said that if I want to get my shirt done, I simply go into whatever it's called, a dry cleaners. In French, it's a, a pressing, and I go in, and I just pretend that I'm a, a deaf mute. Right. And they know what they know what you do with a shirt. Yes. Right? You go in with your shirt. They know what you want them to do. So you hand over the shirt. They give you a chit. You're expecting the chit, and then off you go. And what you have to find out, if you can, is when you can come back for it. Right. Right. And so he said, the best way to communicate is simply to do nothing. Because yeah. if you go into a hotel, they know what you want. Yes. Right. And uh, and I think he's right. Yeah. Communication is much easier than speaking a language. And my students have come into the class, they want to speak the language. And that means being able to express Express themselves correctly correctly and in a way that, yes, it is appropriate, yes. Yes. And the other thing is, you can't learn if you have no feedback. If you go out into the playground, for example, and you want to learn skipping, or you want to learn to play marbles, or you want to anything, children in age primary school, for sure. example, they go out into the playground, they have feedback constantly. If you're skipping and the rope doesn't go under your feet, that's feedback. You know you've done something wrong. A different moment, exactly. Yeah. And you can only learn if you have feedback, which tells you what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. I remember um, when I learned to windsurf, for example, I, I saw, I was up at Lac Saint-Point, Saint-Point uh, in the upper Jura, and I saw somebody skimming across the surface uh, on this boat without a boat. I mean, it was right. just amazing. And I thought, I wanted to do that. Right? So sometime later, I went back, and um, I bought myself an hour of a windsurf. I took it down to the edge, and I started to get on it, and I fell off it immediately. And that, even as I fell, I was saying to myself, oops, you, you learned too far, sure. too far, far over. You had your hypothesis for what you were going to try next time. Uh, exactly. And I got out of the water and I knew that this next time I had to lean in a completely different way. Yeah. This is feedback. This is we, we live in a world where you learn with constant feedback. <laughs> it's tr- I mean, there's this term, the trial and error is almost sometimes said in a disparaging way. And yet, most of the time, we learn so efficiently by trying things out discovering what the error is and trying something different. This is the problem with trial and error. People talk about trial and error and what they forget to say is trial, feedback, right? Trial, error, feedback, new trial, which is different. Absolutely. And better. And 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 usually. Well, certainly, certainly, and move a step towards mastery anyway. Yes. Either it's eliminating one possibility, which will turn out to be a dead end as well, or it leads you further on uh, where you want to go. Yes. Yes. But trial and error is, is how we learn. And the problem, I mean, if you take, I'm, I may be being unfair to the communicative classroom, but if your criteria is that the message has got across and you therefore don't correct some error in the, in the student's speech, yes. without that, if they have it, the absence of any feedback gives people the impression, well, I must have done it right. I mean, how can they know that they've done it wrong? They believe they've done it right, and that error gets pushed down, it will become fossilized. And what Higgs and Clifford were, were writing about was the fact that if you haven't had feedback, if you haven't been corrected, you are going to end up believing this is the language, and to try and unpick false, incorrect language habits is a thousand times harder than trying to get it right at the beginning time, at the first time, yeah. Trying to get it right the first time. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. So it is, I mean, yes, I mean, one can say it's a scandal when the teacher doesn't correct. What is the teacher being paid for, if not to give some sort of quality control in the classroom? Yes, yes, exactly. Well, if you call it facilitating, well, I suppose you're getting people to speak, or you're doing this, or you're doing that, but clearly, uh, if, you, if you're, if, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm a teacher, then my job is to make sure that what happens is correct. Yeah. yeah and yeah. the students know it. Yeah. I don't, what I never say, for example, is, oh, good, fabulous, yeah. this kind of thing. Because this, again, this is, this is psychologically, uh, what this means is I'm judging. Mm-hmm. Right? And I don't want to judge my students. I don't, I, I, what I do is I evaluate their language. I tell them what I tell them silently, usually. 
yes. what it should be. Yeah. I have all sorts of ways of correcting. For example, if I'm correcting syllables, then I can do it this way. I can put the word onto my uh, fingers. Like four this, syllables. Four syllable word like this, and then I can point out to them that the stress should be here, which yes. I do like this. Right? And then what I can do is spread out my finger and just go like that, and that means put it all together, which they might not be able to do first time around, but we work on it a couple of times. We slow it down, we speed it up, we slow it down, we speed it up until it all hangs together. And then we put it back in the sentence, wherever it lived in the sentence, and, um, and, and there you go.